Ciao ragazzi, cominciamo perché poi se arriva qualcuno dopo è solo per spiegarvi un po', eh, per raccontarvi un po' come nasce questo progetto. Questo progetto nasce in collaborazione col Comune di Milano e con Pepinier, che è una residenza d'artista eh, internazionale, questo sì. dire perché ospita, eh, i paesi ospitanti sono veramente tanti. Mm, noi ehm, Abbiamo scelto quest'anno di lavorare sul tema della città di Milano e soprattutto sul concetto della distruzione. Um, adesso poi vedrete come è, com è stato affrontato. L'idea è di, eh, di ragionare su questo tema e di trovare, qui nasce poi il titolo del progetto che si chiama che è appunto Common Ground, eh, un punto, un terreno in comune eh, sul quale diciamo, figure diverse ed esperienze diverse possono ragionare, intervenire e portare anche dei valori personali in, su questo tema. Um, I due artisti che hanno lavorato e che stanno ancora lavorando su questo tema sono Klaus Fruttings che ha ospitato come eh, diciamo, aspetto di progettazione da Studio Azzurro eh, e noi invece come IED ospitiamo mh, Pau Garcia. Uh, questo è, le loro figure e il loro percorso diciamo, professionale artistico è molto diverso, adesso poi ve lo racconteranno brevemente um, mm -hmm. e questo è per noi interessante perché è la modalità un po' con cui Ed lavora, no? cioè, questo lo state vedendo probabilmente anche durante le tesi trasversali, cioè riuscire a intersecare un po' le vostre competenze però con un obiettivo comune. Oggi come abbiamo pensato di raccontarvi il progetto, facendo un'intervista tra loro due, cioè si intervisteranno a vicenda mh, per cercare di, um, come dire, anche di fare un po' il punto della situazione su, su, sui lavori, su, sull'avanzamento del progetto. Loro prima non si conoscevano, si sono conosciuti circa un mese e mezzo fa più o meno. Quindi è anche, è anche un po' quello forse che è successo a voi, no? non, non vi conoscevate, non avete mai lavorato prima insieme e dal, dall'oggi al domani invece bisogna iniziare a trovare anche una pratica metodologica per fare questo. Mm. Mi dite qualcosa, fammi no. pensare. No, nel senso che semplicemente una casualità, un caso che eh, queste due, due residenze separate poi siano confessi anche in un progetto comune, quindi in realtà che ci sono in qualche modo tre, esatto. per cui ci sono i progetti singoli e poi i progetti di insieme, che, che è diciamo, appunto la condivisione di questo common ground cioè, sui Milano. Um, mi sono iniziato di dire che tutto questo diciamo, si concluderà con una mostra alla fabbrica del vapore a metà gennaio più o meno, quindi è per questo che anche il tema sì. fa confluire in un progetto reale, concreto e anche molto tangibile da un certo punto di vista. Um, se avete delle domande? Sì, il chat adesso succede. Esatto, adesso siamo a, è anche in streaming, sì. quindi poi la si può anche rivedere. Quindi... Comunque chiaramente se avete delle domande o qualcosa non vediamo. Ci interrompete. Sì, sì. Ok. Liberamente. Ma se avete una domanda che spagnolo? No, no, no. Okay, well, if you don't understand, you can just tell us and we speak again and we try to find what words to explain it, what we're trying to say. Anyway, everything we're saying here is going to be there, so it's going to be easy for you to follow. But if you have questions, we understand a little bit of Italian, so it's easy for us to, to reply in English, but yes. So, first of all, I'm going to just uh, explain in a few words what is uh, common ground. Um, because, as, as Fulvio told before, uh, we didn't uh, know each other before we, we arrived to Milan. 
but we were both working already in some similar aspects about the city, how you can work the city, how you can create within the city. So if, uh, so basically the two projects are uh, at Sitio Milano, this is Paolo's project, it's about destruction, I'm not going to explain it, he will do it, and uh, GPSME, which is my project. Um, both projects actually are based in the city of Milan and are developed. I mean, they're being developed uh, for the past, well, six, seven weeks. So, um, I guess, like, for us, the most important part is to define, I mean, maybe a, a good point to start is to talk to you about, to tell you what is the definition of common ground for us. Because uh, both projects actually are, uh, it could be different, but at the same time, there are so many connections actually where we found and we met and we were like, because we live together in the same house. We share the same studio, we work together. So at some point, actually, we'll start like working together. So maybe you can explain first what is common ground for you and then, then you can start talking. Actually, yeah, we did it as an interview because before I wanted to understand his work and he also wanted to understand my work. So we just had a question. I mean, we just did an interview to each other and then uh, we just got this question, and we're going to try to go through all the interviews in order to show you the process I took and he took what we did together to understand each other's work. Well, so, come around for me was the experience of uh, Richmond to share my knowledge in graphic design with an artist, an artist as well as for me, with all the, all the new media uh, who was a part of me. In, in the point that my project goes in the stride direction, but then you can uh, see a whole spectrum of things from your point of a graphic designer that you have not seen before as, a, as an artist. So for me, Common Ground is this uh, shared experience of uh, this both uh, scene as an artist, as uh, working as a graphic designer. And for me, it's, it's more about the place. It's, it's, uh, it's like a mutual place. I believe that an artist, when you come with your own baggage and you think that you know how to do, then that's a common place already because I never, this is a common place. We're exchanging something. We, you're going to give us probably things back and I'm going to give you things about my project and Paul is going to give you things about his project. And I think this is the, like the, the place where we exchange. We think together things. In, in our case, is we work together, uh, setting up an exhibition, well, kind of a laboratory, I would say, probably, because we did so many uh, tests, experimentation, research together. So it's more about, we test many things, and we try to find a common way, a common ground to express uh, what we wanted to say. So maybe you can start, like, about your common ground. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. sit here next. Uh, well, my project is called Exhibit Milano. Um, well, I will first uh, read this uh, quote of Samuel Gonzalez. Any structure or cons construction is eventually destroyed and eventually used because something better should proceed. Well, the first time I read this quote, uh, I thought it was so obvious. And in some way, it was just a kind of uh, optimistic Chinese problem, you know, in the way, okay. Let's make of this world something better. But then, after working on several projects, I start, uh, I, I realize that in each project you try to innovate, you, you, have to create, you have to create something new. And if you have to create something new, you have to destroy something old. Mm? From this point, the, the point here is that you have to destroy something old. Maybe this, this point, this uh, something else, is useful also. Or uh, maybe it can work in other ways. But the, the point is, if you want to invade, if you, if, you, if you want to create something new, you have to play with the old constructions. You have to break it. You have, you have to just be able to destroy old structures. And in fact, Destruction is a very odd, uh, natural human instinct. Since we are a child, we destroy. We destroy pencils, we destroy whatever, papers, toys, 
And uh, this is for two reasons. Uh, the first reason is uh, very, very easy. It's, uh, we want to, to assert ourselves over an object. We want to say, okay, this is an object and I'm a person, I'm a human, I can rob you. So it's, this is my power. And this is one of the reasons. And the second reason that, in my point, is the interesting one is to know an object. When you broke something, when a child broke a pencil, it's just to know, it's just to know what is inside. To try to understand this pencil and how it works, and this is not just a children uh, behavior. It's also an adult behavior. Um, as a, uh, for example, the forensic pathologists also uh, destroy human bones, you know, just to know how it works. How is this, how is the structure of the body for uh, the human cells? And also the scientists, for example, they destroy the materials just to understand of uh, what is what is the essence of this material, of what uh, what other materials are inside this material. No? Um, from this point, uh, in, in each of these phenomena, uh, the, ch the broken pencil of a child and also the destruction of the body by a forensic is is the same. It's, uh, it's the same phenomenon. It's, uh, it's trying to understand the rules that make an object uh, in one word. <laughs> in, uh, well, so, <laughs> so here we can see how an object can break according to their own rules. Every destruction, every object has his own destruction, and from his and um, from its destruction you can understand better the object. So in this way, every act of destruction also has a kind of constructive sense. No? So in its destruction, we can learn something. And this is my main philosophy in the, in the way I do things. And when I, come, when I came here two months ago, well, one half, uh, I, I came with that. And uh, the point was that I had to analyze the city to, to try to make some connection with this philosophy, with this background concept and the, and the physical place I want to develop the project, in this case Milan. So I spent a week just making walks and trying to inspire myself by the city. And after this week, I realized that the most uh, important object that well, the most important object that I had was the city map of Milan, was the, my connection, my direct connection with the city, because it was confronting my experience with the objective knowledge of the city, a map. And so I think in this way, uh, I started start traditional cartography. And specifically the, the cartography of Milan and confronting my reality, what I have seen in Milan with the, the objective knowledge of Milan, the city maps, the Google maps, the reality that we think is there. So I set a goal. I say, okay, I will do two maps each week that will uh, destroy at least one, per one precept of uh, the urban cartography. And that's what I did. I will show one of the examples. Uh, in this map, uh, this is well, a fragment of the text I read and inspired, inspired me by Bertrand Russell, a British philosopher. Um, what uh, he says here is that there is a collective and individual intellect. And cartographers always have to work with the collective intellect. Why? It's simple. Because the collective intellect is the intellect that you can uh, understand and people from uh, Kamchatka also can understand. And in the cartographic world, 
it will translate in the graphics, for example. Uh, it's the same. It's the same. All the maps of the world uh, breathe the same language, the same graphic language. So this way you can understand a map of wherever. Um, that was the challenge to to just destroy this uh, old division between the intellect of the individual and the collective intellect. So I start developing my own map, my subjective map uh, from the individual intellect. And I create this one that is uh, shaped by the gates of the land. And for me, it's uh, really personal, this map and its shapes, because right now I know each of these gates of Milan, but it's my experience, not the, the global experience, it's not the collective map. Not everybody can understand this map, and not everybody can orient himself by this map. So, in this way, it's a subjective map. It's just a map made for me. And the next one was just meeting with the collective. Uh, intellect. And for that, I started investing, uh, exploring from where I could find the, the collective data. And I start looking at Google Analytics, um, Google AdWords, also Facebook, Gephi, and other tools that uh, give you the opportunity to analyze the interest in social networks or uh, in the internet, in the virtual world. So I analyze each of these gates, each of these orientation points, as if they are virtual spaces. So I generated a new map over the, the last, of, over the, my map, my old map, from the virtual interest of these places. So I search how many likes for the Venezia have on Facebook, or I also search uh, how many search have, have done the people of Italy in in Google Maps of Porto Romano. And from this and from this data I create a new map from this both the intellect and the collective and the collective and the individual intellect. At this point the the important thing yeah, the important thing here well you can see all the maps that I have been doing during these weeks you can check on, on the website. Um, the important point of uh, this new way of generating maps is that you are not just giving coordinates, you are giving something more. You are, well, just imagine, imagine that every map could give you the information of, uh, like this, the virtual interest of the places. I'm sure that maybe the 80% of you will not go to the, these places, will go to them and explore it area of the map. And this could uh, change the social behavior of a city, for example. But the open door that I have been doing is this month and a half. It is also important because we both have an open, we created a platform online, an online platform that you can visit and actually all the information because it's like a, like a journal diary and you can actually follow what we do every day. So it's easy, you can just download this map, you can actually get this information. Yes. What's uh, the middle of the picture, the black part? Well, um, the top, on top. No, no the, the green one. The green one, yeah. The, 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 the black part. Ah, this is the Facebook likes. Facebook yeah. likes. Facebook and likes. the green one? And the green one was uh, related the Facebook likes with the uh, with uh, Google Analytics, the number of search of each gate. You choose a point like Exactly. And each and of uh, the external points yes. are one of the gates. But I don't understand uh, what is it? Uh, what is uh, this, uh, this part of the This part. Well, this is the information of Google Analytics. This is the new map generated by uh, by the, the collective data. So, okay. so uh, it's a, 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 a forma that is generated by 
la quantità di like a seconda, uno, uno è Google Analytics e l'altro è... Esatto. Cioè dalla distanza dal esatto. centro del punto c'è... Cioè... Esatto. Esatto. Sì, sì, sì. Con i like di Facebook. Esatto. Sia con i like di Facebook che con Google Analytics. Con Analytics. Ah, 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 è il perimetro ah, del... Sì. Eh, sì. <ride> so what you're going to see is like actually we both work with data, but it's not the same data. Okay. Okay, well, just to keep going on what Paolo said about the, the, the information we will be collecting. My case, uh, the project I, I had in mind before I came to Milan was uh, a GPS me. Uh, I wanted to actually hold a GPS and I wanted to become the GPS and just explore the place through other people's perception, I mean to the local perception. So I set up an interface uh, on those and Tumblr and um, in that interface I just put, uh, I connect my iPhone with uh, the blog and people were able to see me at any time, 24-7, where I was. And actually, they sent me questions. And they sent me in a mission to discover different places. You will discover, you will see that later. Because uh, the, the thing I wanted when, when, when I proposed this project, I didn't want to come to a city that I, that I, I've been to Milan many times, but for holidays. And also, when you come here, then you have this perception of what you've done about how is Italian language, uh, food, wine maybe, how the people from Italy and fashion and all that kind of global, let's say global perception and sometimes it's not the real perception because when you live here then you realize that there are much more than that. But to do it actually as a tourist, as an artist tourist, it's difficult for me to get to touch that. You know, to, to really get with my body and just uh, inhabit this perception that I, that I wanted to, to to discover. So basically, um, what I did with this, uh, with this, um, with this platform was uh, to create an online interactive blog where I was uh, actually taking pictures, videos, uh, I was recording uh, audio, and also I was drawing with my iPads, and also with one finger, I was drawing, I mean, trying to get the perception I get in a place. Like, you can see all the drawings in between. Then you see my iPhone with, uh, with uh, the map. And then people actually were um, asking me questions about all those places. So this project is about, uh, it's about a public, public project where I was, I was trying to, to work with the memory of a place, with the perception. And then I was working with that, that was my data. And then I was actually putting my own artistic touch on that. Because uh, one of the examples is, uh, I don't know, we can't really read that. It says secret gardens in Milan. One day, I just received a message and somebody said, do you know, have you been to the secret gardens in Milan? I was like, okay. And I started asking in the streets because I got, I got a message, right? So I started asking people in the streets, Italian people, what are the secret gardens in Milan? People were like, I don't know. And then I started looking on the internet and then I found like the, the gardens at the Pinacoteca di Breda, they're kind of secret gardens in Milan has plenty of private and secret gardens, amazing. Like, uh, it's a Villa Invernici, right? Yeah, With the pink flamingos and all these kind of places that a normal tourist probably, it's not, they're not gonna discover those places because it's, it's you need to actually live here, really know people, you know, local. You need to be like a local to discover these, these things. So it's, it was for me um, nice also to, to let me guide to people that I, I I got like, I don't know, so far, probably 45 anonymous people sending me messages, and also people who signed, they put the name, and they've been following me every day and asking me things. Uh, for example, on the picture uh, on the left, there's all the destruction, uh, but that was power, so he, he said me, and he has, yes. This is a Tumblr, yes. yes. Yeah, because for me, it's, it's still online, yes. Well, we're gonna give you the, the, the address oh, after, yes. It's still online, but since we're already working on the final kind of project, the catalog and everything, we just made already the selection of the pictures that are going to appear in the catalog, but I want to still keep working till the end of the residency because now I've got a rhythm and I've got a methodology of work that I'm doing, and then it's I'm more fast of what, what I'm doing, and then I know, and I know places. 
So when somebody said like, I know the shortcuts and I know how to go, and I probably would say that I know Milan much better than some people who live in Milan for many years. But uh, you upgrade every time? Every day, yes. Now, like if you look up there at the maps, can you see the little light of us? Yeah, better. Yeah, this is actually all the points that I already visited Milan. We can't, we can't really see the city anymore. I've been around already to all those points. And all one of them has a story about a picture, a video, a sound, a digital drawing. And the other you see that the question, yes. So, and it's funny because then when I found on the internet the secret garden that I want, and it was closed, of course, then I have to come back the, the, the next day. And it's also because the important thing about this is not about, well, it's not sending me somewhere. Because also I receive, like, very, uh, not silly, but one people, well, one person sent me to eat uh, an ice cream at uh, the central station. But it was funny going there, because then when I went there, I discovered so many other things. So it's when I'm on a mission, in a direction, then with my body, then I just, because I'm always walking, this is all by walk. And it takes like every day, I'm just walking for four hours, five hours, and then... It's not an application, but... Uh... The application is already online. I mean, you can download it. It's Instamap, and then you can actually download it on your phone, and then it's connected to the internet. And if you put it somewhere, on, maybe in your blog or a website, uh, we all, I mean, we can follow you, and we know where you are. <laughs> so it's <laughs> LDX. <Eldex. laughs> uh, no, it's Instamapper. But then you have longitude or latitude, I think, from Google, which is the same. I can give you all those names after if you want. But you also have it in, I mean, in Facebook, and you have Twitter, and you have... Because in my work, I do a lot of participatory works and collective works. Because, uh, as it said before, like, if I, if I, I often, I mean, I say this all the time, I define my work with this Chinese proverb, uh, tell me and, I, and I'll forget, show me and I might remember, involving and I understand. So I believe like if you uh, involve yourself with the body, because I also believe like a good artist is not only the one who thinks, but also you get involved with the body, then you probably remember because there are things you do with your body, and then you know how to do it. And you know like when you see something and you walk and you just like, so it's everything like a, we're like a machine, so we just learn things step by step. Uh, how many you I have so far 125 entries, but they're mixed. They're image, they're either drawings or uh, pictures or videos. Because what I was doing, you will see if you visit the blog, that there is always a daily uh, photo, a daily video with the, the, the best moments of my day. I just record the best moments and I just post them online every day. And then you can also follow the shape of my work, then you know where I've been. And the, the, the idea of the project at the beginning was that people connect a lot on the internet on, the, on my blog and then send me right away where I was. But people actually never did that. So they were actually sending me things the night before, so I was planning the thing. And when Paolo asked me, what is your, uh, what was your question, what is the greatest resource uh, of inspiration about this project? I said, like, well, is this feeling about not knowing where I'm going? Because when I woke up every day and I look my message, I say like, okay, what the hell is that? Then I have to go on the internet and I have to check and then I just go and sometimes I'm like, oh, this is taking hours on the tram, you know, and I have to go and go and I'm like, oh. and I, I don't know if it's a dangerous place or not, but I trust the person who's sending me there. And it's also this, because when you don't have a preconceived perception of something, then when you discover it, then you just like get it more, I mean, we just really visit something and you because if you go, I don't know, to Goma, you know, you see, you've seen pictures, then it's just, you know how it looks like. Then you go, you take one picture, you visit, you go around, and that's it, right? So, okay, all the drawings, actually, what I tried to do, I don't know, you know that uh, building, the round building? You know all these buildings, right? No? Uh, the, the, down there, the round, no, this drawing, no? Well, nobody knows it, actually. Have you been to that, that, that? It's near uh, San Siro, the stadium. San Siro, yes. Yeah. And uh, just a quickly, like a, like a story about that picture, the one with the tree. Somebody asked me, somebody sent me to that uh, that park, and they said like, take the picture of the biggest tree in the park. So I went and I was like looking around it, 
And don't that actually what is nice about this picture is not the picture, but it's the story that goes with. Because when I was taking the picture, an old man came and he started talking in Italian. And a lot of people were friends. He said, oh, hello, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, who's this person? And then another person came and he said, like, oh, no, no, it's, you know, it's okay. He just, he's got Alzheimer's. But he used to be a very famous uh, orchestra conductor, and his wife, a very famous Italian uh, opera singer. And I was like talking to these people that are just like, you know, and I was trying to, you know, reply in Italian, say little words. And, and he was like, but I know you, I'm sure I know you. And I'm like, I don't think so, you know. <laughs> but I spent 10 minutes in front of that tree. And what is important is not about the picture, but it's about what happened around this picture. And it's this perception. And that's what we're both trying to put together in this common ground is that we both create a, a perception that goes from, you know, from local people, things that happen between space and time. So it is important for us to create something together. So yeah, there is well, maybe one last piece. Um, yeah. So here actually you have a video. That's how it comes on the, on the blog. And also um, the picture up there is uh, Trump. You know, somebody just asked me, he wanted to see Trump, you know, how about well. So I just went for this. People that are asking you questions like, what are you going to do other things that you're here? Do you know that people? No, no, no. All these people, oh. actually, they're, they're completely strangers. And some of them, but you can't see a name. Well, it's a number. But some of the people that you can see is anonymous. And I don't know who's like sending me. They're or from all over the world. Yeah, yeah. That person was in Europe. And uh, mm -hmm. of course, he knew that. Uh, and, and I realized that he was a fashion designer because they had me also for the patterns. And then he said, like, can you find patterns in the city? So I just went and I was trying to get patterns, you know? And now we're using those patterns to one of the common things we're working with. Because it's also something that Paolo was working with, all this way to create, like, language, graphic language in the city, which are important, you know? And uh, Yes, well, the picture, some of the pictures are with a camera, but I use iPad, iPhone, because if you, I can give you also my, uh, the email of my website address. Because I, I actually, I've been doing a research about digital devices. And what I like to question the basis, what I've been doing for many years is that I want to, to know how they affect how our daily, daily life and how they, they change our behavior towards society. Because now when it's like in, in the suburb, everyone is like sending text or like taking pictures like that. You know, we're like, attached to this, you know, and this actually has been my tool that my, I've, been, I've been working with it because I decided to work with it and also my iPad because iPad was like really fast just like to do it with a finger, you know, I didn't have a pen or, you know, ready to have to like spend time, you know, doing that. So uh, I think we can maybe want to show you some, some of the pieces we're working on. The pieces, they're, they're not uh, finished yet. But uh, basically, we, we created uh, flexible, simple um, volumes and continuous surfaces based on all the data Paul and I have been working with. So maybe, I don't know, you, yeah. maybe you can this one, you can explain this one. Uh, for example, this one, this is one of the pieces we are developing for the edition. And um, it's made by, the, by different collectives. In this case, well, the, like in of interest. But the, the real ones are made by drawings of architects, drawings of children, drawings of artists, and drawings of tourists and from random citizens. From we, artists. From, from, yes. Yeah. And uh, we just ask them to draw the city of Milan. It's how they perceive the city of Milan. It's a simple shape they draw on a block. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, if you want, you can do it after. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is actually Milan from first. So we ask different people just to draw what shape has Milan, and uh, we wanted to create a metaphor of the of the collective perception of a city in a three-dimensional way. So we decide to use five shapes of each collective and create all the, 
our shapes between them, between each of them. So we have a total of uh, 32 shapes of the whole uh, polytheism perception of Milan. And it's going really well. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm wondering it's because we did it, uh, we really asked people with this in the street for people with this class in our life. So we wanted also to record their voices or some of the people's voices telling us a story about like sharing an, an experience with us. And the, the, the experience were really uh, different, I would say, because there were people like writing and reading after, and it was really about like very poetic. Uh, and it was nice, but at the same time, we have people who like, got the microphone and started talking and talking and talking. And, and it's funny because we really got nice experiences and memories about people. And I'm sure, like, I don't know, these kind of stories that you never share with anyone because it could be silly. But at the same time, we got this one, this guy who was in Halloween, and he was dressed as a, as a mouse. And he grew up in the street with a gun. And he was telling me, how, how possible is that? And, in Halloween, somebody just with a weapon, like asking for my phone. I mean, I was dressed as a mouse, so it's kind of you know. And then he was he was telling us where was that, the street, giving all this physical information, because uh, it's important for us just to try at the end to create something like very physical that is going to translate. Because we both we both work with perception, which is really difficult to touch. And it's really easy, it's easy to put it on a paper and write it down, but then when you try to think of shape, then things get a little bit difficult. Then you have to think about the material, so we have all these conversations before, of course. But yeah, it's important. I mean, the, the result is going to be nice, I hope these shapes. I think. <laughs> well, this is the, the shape I showed you before, so it's uh, having the patterns. So we decided to work with patterns, and then decided to confront, this is going to be one of the main pieces of the, the, the exhibition, because it's going to be two meters high by two meters, two meters and a half uh, the width. So it's going to be a very important piece, but made with paper. And there is a projection on top of that. So what we wanted to do is just take these little things that we see in the streets, the, all the patterns you saw, and then try to just confront people to it. And then we're going to be talking about all these relationships, to physical relationship to, to the city, to all these elements in the city, and the sound, of course, because there are also audio patterns about traffic, uh, people walking in the streets, uh, some building park. Uh, what else do we have? Well, we have many, many different things. Let's see what shapes we have here, made uh, by the Rikami, are, um, are shapes that we, that we took from the GPS maps. Yeah, that all the all the walls of class. So all my walls actually be, well, became a shape, and all these shapes are telling the story. And then you'll be able to confront, and you can go underneath, you can go around. So it's basically uh, like the big shape of Milan, made by paper, and it's a lot of perception in it. Yeah. Number three. <laughs> I yeah, <am>. well. <laughs> We are working in, 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 the, in the third piece that we want to confront uh, a place, an abandoned place, with uh, the real space of the exhibition. And we, we wanted there, first, to develop a discussion between you and your, your perception of yourself and also the empty Yes, of a space. Mm, and in some way, it will be a, a, a video, a kind of a video that is projected directly to a window. And you can see uh, uh, this projection from both, yeah, both, sides. both sides of the, of the window. And it's also because when we are in the city, then you're really like looking at something, something is happening. But then maybe there with a video installation, it's going to be nothing is going to happen. But then you're going to be waiting for something. And all this installation with five pieces, uh, this main laboratory with five pieces, have a connection. And all together, the pieces go all together because we've been working. I mean, it's not only one piece of cloud or mine. We just decided to work together every piece. Even if sometimes you can see more of his work or my work. 
but it's also technically because we to that sort of we have a lot of technique. So we've been working on different things that we, we have never done. So as the last piece, I mean the no, piece number four, which is a holographic uh, holographic screen that's gonna that's gonna display all my drawings. And then what we decided to do is since file works with the, the notion of destruction, uh, for me this was the way of connect my works to my diary. Every day I was like really doing lines, right? Drawing something. And then I just put them together and then we decided to break that thing, break that timeline with different destructions. So you're gonna see well you can see that probably well we didn't have that, but the first picture, then you can see there are two images like melting together, kind of destructing. And then also all these pieces, they're going to be also projected on the ground. So there is also many things happening on the ground. It's very perceptive. We decided to do like audio, uh, video, and also like the perception. And when you get into that, you have to be like really into a perception of Milan. Well, we didn't have to accept that the, this shape and the shape too, the biggest, Origami sculpture uh, are interactive. Uh, yeah, with sensors. Yes. So they have sensors and you can interact with that. In this case, for example, if you get close to the screen, to the draw, the draw destroys it and it uh, appears another draw. So, in some way, you get involved inside the, the shapes. And of course, all these projects are. Uh, what is important also is because I think we both uh, decided when we start working together that the most important thing, it wasn't the last, I mean, the, the, the exhibition, but it was all the process. So then we have a, this catalog, a very well-designed catalog by Pau, that is going to actually keep the step, step by step of what we did. And we decided together what information we put it together. Because I think if we just if you go and see the exhibition and you don't know and we don't know we don't have all this background information or you don't know anything about it, it's gonna be very difficult to feel what we're telling you. Because it is important actually to know that there is two platforms online where you can visit, get all the information, and if you want to know more, then you can ask us and then you can just exchange things and information. Well we have this making up, yeah. That's us working. <laughs> or maybe yeah, the previous one. Let me go. Then, then you can see like how well the, the holographic thing, how it's gonna be on the floor. Then how physical is gonna be really involved the physical of the public as well, the, the body. And this is the shape number one that we already like we finished uh, almost finished, all of them. And these are, are both blocks that you can also go and have a look if you want. And then, uh, I don't know if you want to have like more, we try to make it short so we can uh, exchange more about the, whatever you want to ask us about the project or specific things. Or... Any questions on that? Yes. Well, in some way, we had uh, different, different. Uh, we wanted to explore you know, the technical resources we had, and that was an important point, I think, for for in the way to choose you know, what was uh, some of the pieces. Uh, then, for example, the sculptures are grown from one of the maps that I developed in my projects also. And also the connection between the illustrations of clouds are obviously things because they are the day per day of, uh, of his life here in Milan. 
Yeah, I think it's, it's most about all these common ground, like all these common things we've been discovering every day. That he knew when I told him I really want to do something in my drawings. But then we start thinking what we could do. And then we knew the technique we had with the Studio Azzurro. So we just knew that, okay, what about the holographic things? It's probably, and then we start talking with the technicians. And then we just start thinking what is the best technique? What is the best thing to show these things? Not just have like a, like a slap show with the, you know, the drawings. How take advantage of that? And also to talk about destruction. Then, so I actually accept, I just say, yeah, they, how can you use that kind of notion of destruction? And for the other the pieces, I think is we both knew that what is the strong, because it's a laboratory, so we allow ourselves to do many mistakes and errors. So, but then we know what is good and what is what actually could have another development that could go somewhere else. So, and then yeah, we I yeah, well, we actually we really understood each other and never had a confrontation. No, we never like we just understood that it was really like a, I don't know some, something sometimes happens that kind of you know you really understand well each other and. Since we are so different in what we do, then I just trust him on you know these shapes of uh, these shapes of sorry the shapes in the end these shapes of the end with the well this and the material I just let him you know like whatever you think is the best it is but then we both decided how we wanted to do it and then we have two different books actually and then we go to different people. And then every night, or just every, you know, sometimes a week, which a couple of times a week, we just talk about it, and then we start deciding which, you know, which, which shapes we're working with. Because it is important, actually, to, for as a common ground to collab, I mean, just to talk, you know, I mean, that, that thing was, I've been doing that a lot. So. Yeah? You know already. Everything. <laughs> so you have other questions? I don't know. Uh, no. Uh, she, she didn't understand well which is the, the, the common ground project. The sculpture so how did it project cioè co come si sono uniti i due progetti cioè come loro hanno lavorato un po' separatamente uno ha lavorato sì. su sulle mappe cioè le camminate in città ogni giorno sì. via esatto e, e l'altro la sulle esperienze sì. degli altri invece sì. sia su Google Analytics che esatto. su Facebook che lavorando sulle mappe, sulle percezioni delle mappe che hanno disegnato per lui quindi questi sono i due processi sì. da uno nascono più le sculture quello di Tau che sono le sue dall'altro invece nasce quel discorso olografico diciamo che il punto comune è quella grande specie di, di scultura di origami che è questa qua perché le forme eh, degli origami sono tratte dalle sue mappe, le percezioni dei patterns invece sono, sono tratte da... E anche, yeah, it's, it's a big, well, because it's, we don't consider common ground this exhibition as the final project, because we both want to keep working on it, we just want to finish with this exhibition, and then say, like, all the pieces are done, and then we can keep enjoying ourselves in Milan, because when we start, I think it's going to be on the 17th or so. Yeah, and then we still have two more weeks left, and I want to go every day out and still keep drawing, because for like for two weeks, I, I haven't drawn anything. The 17th of January. The 17th of January. Non è ancora sicurissimo, dobbiamo ancora fare una È la fabbrica del vapore. Who studied graphic design? I studied graphic design. Uh, how does knowledge uh, regret the influence the uh, your project? Oh. <laughs> uh, I'm a graphic designer. I know I'm not, uh, well, I'm 90% graphic design. So for me, it was a. Uh, What's the 10%? The, the rest. <laughs> I love this. From Barcelona. <laughs> But the, the point is, uh, I have developed, I have developed this project, this artistic project, because it's artistic, 
Uh, but from the point of view of a graphic designer, um, I have spent a lot of time since developing the graphics and the way to communicate this concept more sometimes than the proper concept itself, because, because the concept was already gone. So in some, in some way it was like a, a brand, but a brand of a concept, just to make a translation. And the other I'm an artist. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so fine arts. I studied fine arts. Uh, well, uh, the fine arts school is probably like in Paris. It's like the Pinacoteca di Vera, so you do painting, sculpture. But at the end, I was more uh, into new media, and then I did a master's degree in. Uh, I have a master's degree in new media. And technology design, so it's kind of all these interfaces that I've been designing. It's about the participatory. That's what I've been looking for: how people can participate. And my pieces are not only what I say they're going to be. New new media actually, it's uh, it's all related to computers, and also like digital photography is new media. So it's all these things that are new that actually are taking a new technology. Well, they I believe I would say that yes. Yeah. I mean, like all these the, the social networks like Facebook, Twitter, that's, that, that, that's part of new media. And in my work, I use a lot of Facebook, Twitter to communicate. I'm using a blog, Tumblr. It's actually the, yes, that's the main, yes. that's actually my main piece of work. How does Tumblr It's just a blog. Yeah. And then you have to put things every day. And people can actually, like Twitter, they can re blog whatever you put. They can like you, then you have friends. But, uh, yeah, it's not like Facebook in the way you have to have friends to make it work. No, I mean, if we're not friends, I can still look at your pictures and the information you post. Mm -hmm. so There's a question. Uh, Simone, no, I had a question. Voglio dire una cosa. Voglio dire una cosa ai ragazzi un attimo, cioè se ci pensate il, il, il lavoro, il medium che loro utilizzano è l'online, sono i loro blog, cioè la, la scultura, l'installazione, soltanto per come dire, dare un risultato più concreto e visualizzare il loro lavoro, ma tutto il lavoro che fanno sul blog non è soltanto un modo per, non è il backstage di quello che hanno fatto, cioè il lavoro e la ricerca è proprio quello, quindi basterebbe eh, come dire, portare quello per dimostrare il loro lavoro, esatto. questo è soltanto, cioè la mostra in realtà ha una, una parte in più che viene per dare un'identità sì, visiva sì. al progetto. Sì, infatti quello che diceva Klaus prima, no? che la, la, il progetto non finisce con la mostra, cioè la mostra è un pretesto diciamo, per creare un ulteriore momento di aggregazione e di confronto, mentre fino alla loro fine del, cioè del periodo qua a Milano, forse anche dopo, vorranno continuare questo progetto perché comunque è, una, è un continuo mappare in qualche modo l'esperienza di ognuno di loro. Sì, yes, probabilmente abbiamo sviluppato una metodologia di lavoro e quello che sto facendo qui, potrei sviluppare in Paris, New York, uh, I don't know, Rome, perché posso andare con il mio GPS e scoprire la città in questo modo. So what about like uh, designing a tool that allows people to get lost in the city and then interact? I've never seen any application that does that, that you can just turn on your GPS and just wait until someone sends you to Then you actually, you have to go and search for that information. Here I'm not searching for anything, all the things are coming to me. And I'm kind of the Google for this person who's sending me to get pictures, to get like audio. No, this is the first, the first uh, city. I proposed this project before Milan, I proposed for another residency in Los Angeles, and they replied to me, they said like, oh, this is, this project is nonsense, this is like, it's too complicated. Los but then I said like, fine, you know, okay. it was funny, but yeah, probably, I'm sorry? Los Angeles is much bigger. And then yeah. you, you need a car, and apparently, I, I've never been to LA, but I think you need a car to get, go around. Yeah. So probably, yeah. But uh, yeah, but then I was, when Milan said yes, it's because we both work with the same, I don't know, the, the city. And this perception about what we want to share with people and this is because maybe as a as a school, it's, it's not even finished or fixed. We actually like to, it's a laboratory, it's always going to change. And this actually, GPS needs to change. And then we have another aspect that I'm not thinking about it right now, but then in the future it could be different, you know? France and Colombia. So we have one. Thing.
methodology, the standards of the methodology you were adopted, and what the interest in that is. What did you learn from each other, and how did the, the collaboration change to your perspective, or how did it add to a different methodology which you discovered that was in some of you had the background and also the approach? Well, then I got to go to my case is a lot because as uh, formerly as a graphic designer, uh, we thought that we have like a huge vision of the art world and we don't have it. We are graphic designers. And uh, then looking at this open mind of, uh, well, the, the main point I have learned is to be open minded on the last. Uh, in producing the, the last shapes, all the shapes. I, at first I was thinking in, in just do some, some maps in two dimensions. Then, I, talking with Klaus, I started evolving all these bidimensional uh, thoughts in a three dimensional. And for me, that's the most important point. Also, the, that we are friends. <laughs> I don't know how, how my work maybe influenced him because when I arrived, I have already a project. It was done, and I set up the interface before I came to Milan. So I was like the next the next day. I was already outside taking pictures. So when we start talking about talking. I'm, I'm, I saw him like really looking around, and since actually we are um, maybe ten years um, ten years older than Pau, and then I have like uh, I've been doing a lot of research. So it's it's probably this methodology that I have to confront to someone like. Has another one, and also uh, his tools are different. Well, he used it. I mean, we have the same computer and blah blah blah, but he uses it in a different way. So I have actually to maybe just step back and then not really just because it wouldn't be easy for me to tell him that we're going to do this and this and this because I have this project and it's clear. No, I just adapt myself to many things and I was open because I that's what we thought about common ground. Common ground is this place where you have to rethink everything, and even if I have this process. My methodology was really clear because it was, okay, I set up the interface, I wait for a message, and then I go on a mission. I produce something, I try to get what the person wants me to perceive from their perception, and then actually I take it back and I post it online. But then by then I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do with that. And then I said, I have three months to think about it. But then when we start talking, then I realized that he already thought about these shapes, how from one shape you can use, you know, using AutoCAD and, and I said, like, well, there's those things I never thought about it or I never used them. So we both start like mixing techniques and there are things that he does and I just let him do and it's the same. So we just, it's like a collective. So we're just, but yeah, it worked well since the beginning because sometimes it takes a lot of time to, to, to understand each other and to know what he's best, you know, he's doing best and yeah. So, Thank <laughs> you.